In this quick video, we're going to look at working with RAW files in Luminar AI, and in particular for me, the Fujifilm X-T3. So let's dive right in. Here we are in the catalogue view, and the images that you see on the screen are all JPEGs, except for the ones I've hidden for the videos for the rest of this week. If you're a previous user of Luminar 4.3, you know the info tab was up here. Now it's down the bottom down here, and currently right now I have the RAF file from the Fujifilm X-T3 highlighted. If I jump to any other one, these are all JPEGs. Even the images from Shutterstock, they're JPEG. That one there, it still is a JPEG, although that came from the Nikon D800. That one there is another JPEG, and it tells you there, but that came from the Lumix S5. If I click information, you can see the information from this. So it came from the Lumix S5. It was ISO 100, 27mm focal length, F9, fifth of a second to create that image there. Today we are going to work with this one. The reason these images are JPEGs is that I use Luminar AI as a plugin, same as Luminar 4.3. So I've actually loaded these images in to provide demos for YouTube. And this one in particular today is the Fujifilm X-T3, as I've already said. So there you have all the metadata and info on the actual image itself. So we're going to jump from the catalogue into templates and then into a very quick edit for this image. What I want to show you first is the grid view itself though. If I go up here, I can take small grid preview. So you have medium, large and largest. Largest is great if I didn't have my glasses on, largest would be perfect. But at the moment, I'm going to go for large. From here, I can jump in to enlarge the image in full screen and just double click in there and you can see it in full screen. If I want to get back to the grid view, just press G on the keyboard and it goes back to the grid view. What I'm going to do is edit. Jump into templates just to show you templates. It's read that file straight away and it's suggested nature, scenery, or urban style. The urban style I can only presume is because of some of the colours within the actual image itself and for me I'm seeing a lot of blues in here from the background of the sky and a lot of blues in here. So that's the reason I think it's recommended urban style. For me though I'm going to jump into a straight edit instead of using templates and it will be a quick edit because I just want to see how it interacts and works with raw files. So I'm going to get into edit straight away. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get into Enhance AI, just to bring out some of the detail in here. So there we go, that's actually quite nice, just that quick effect there. I'm then going to get into Structure, push the Structure. Colour I'll leave, I'll jump back to Colour later. I'm going to get into Details, Small Details for this. And I'm not going to mask anything because we have quite a detailed image here with the structure of the leaves and the branches. Landscape. Now, do I want to use Foliage Enhancer? And I'll be honest, no, I actually don't like the Foliage Enhancer within any of my images because I find the greens too much. But for this image it works because it has enhanced the foliage all over. This image contained more foliage than it does anything else. So pushing that to, in this case, 21 has worked for this image. Later though, I'm going to pull back the greens, but it has worked so far. I don't want to dehaze this one because I'm not going to get too much out of the image by dehazing it, so I'm cool with that one. Next, I'm going to jump into the Professional tab. And if I go in here, I've got Optic, Super Contrast, Color Harmony, Dodge and Burn and Clone Stamp. For me, I am going to play with Super Contrast and Colour Harmony to bring out a couple of details within this image. And I'm saying that I'm going to use these. This is the first time I've edited this in Luminar AI, so if it doesn't work, I'll delete it from the video. So I'm going to get into Colour Harmony and I'm going to open everything up here just so that I can see what's going on. So if I take the brilliance back, because I did mention I wanted to pull back the greens, so I'm going to take that back slightly. It is a 28 megabyte raw file, so you can see how quickly it is working with it. And I can push the warmth, which affects the greens and the yellows, possibly too much up here. Let's pull that back slightly, because we're looking for a nice subtle edit for this one. I don't want anything too much to happen with this one. Right, we then have colour contrast. 
and I can push that right through there. But again, I don't want such a contrasty effect. Split colour warmth, I like the tones that are going on in this. Will I like it if I add more blues to it? No, because of what's happening here. So what I'm doing is I'm reading the entire image as we go. So that means in the shadows, do I want to add blue to them or do I want to warm them up slightly? And what I can actually do is I can go into the magenta and add a very, very slight magenta to the shadows. And I am going to go there. If I flick that on and off, you may notice down here what happens to the shadows. So I quite like the effect that's having in that, and it's only at minus six. So again, subtly does it for this image. Colour Harmony, I'm quite happy with the adjustments in there. I'm now going to get into Super Contrast. So I'm going to play with the contrast of the highlights, the mid-tones and the shadows. If I push that over there and release it, you can see the difference that that's making. But what it's doing is it's bringing the blue of the sky back in. So we want, again, everything subtle for these. So let's go to there and I can live with that. So let's see the highlight balance. We take it that way. And the reason I'm releasing is to let you see how quickly it refreshes a raw file. Push that to there. Looks okay to me. I am going to leave it just there with a nice balance of six. Mid-tones, I'm going to take it to 100%. Pull it back, back up to 100% and pull it back. And I am looking again very subtly. The major effect here was on the main tree, so I'm going to leave it there. So let's look at the shadows contrast and see what difference that can make as well. So I'm going to push that just to around there. Quite happy with that. Let's take it to 100 just to see the difference. There you go, that's working really nice as well, but for me, personal level, too much. I like the kind of moodiness in that, so I'm going to go for 49 and I'm going to leave it at that. I'm now going to jump back into the Essentials panel, and the last one of the last things that I'm going to do with this is just test the colour and see what I can bring out without any dodging and burning or anything, just using the sliders here. So. Let's go in and go into HSL. I'm going to get into the hue of the yellow just to watch what it does with the grass and the leaves and the trees. And we'll just warm that up slightly there. So again, I'll use the semicolon. So we have the before and the after, before and after. Or I can go in there. And so far, I'm again, I'm quite happy with this with the speed of it as well. And then I could get into the greens and play with the hues of the greens and adjust it to what I want. But again, it's taking it too far away from the original image. One thing that's been bothering me about the image is where the birds have been. And I want to remove that from the image. So let's zoom in, let's get rid of it, and let's use a raise just to see how it works on a raw file. So I'm gonna zoom into here. And what I'm going to do is choose Erase, take the brush size up using the square brackets, click there, 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 I'll get away with that one, and then click Erase. So there you go, that's get rid of that really, really quickly as well. So for me, that's how Luminar AI has interacted with a Fujifilm X-T3 file in a relatively short space of time just using edits. Hopefully that lets you see how it interacts and how it works with raw files. I do understand that's a 28 megabyte file and other files will be larger or smaller depending on the type of camera you have. So once I've got a larger file, I'll try that with Luminar AI, just a single image edit. As I say, I use it as a plugin, but I'll bring it in and create a video with a larger file just to let you see how it actually interacts and what speed it interacts at. Hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully you enjoyed the quick edit for it. It was mainly to let you see between the catalogue, the grid view and the information panel. Remember, stay safe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.